<clears throat> All right, guys. So uh, let's let's get into it. Uh, I got a phone call yesterday uh, from uh, Glass Ratner, uh, from Seth, specifically from Seth. Uh, they reached out to me because they wanted to sit down and talk and give as much information as they could to the community and really set some records straight according to them and really put it uh, just put out a lot of good information for everybody so first and foremost everybody at this point knows about this i don't know if you can see this but the paperwork here that glass ratner and the abc company put out uh, i have links of it in the in the in the group so uh, if you want to see it the same information is on the website so you can go to the website links. Again, they're all in the uh, Protect Yourself from Distributor group. Uh, and this was their first, their first bit of uh, official information that they gave uh, us, us creditors, if they, as they call us, uh, filmmakers and licensees uh, about this whole process. Now, uh, there has been some information about the ABC, uh, Peter Broderick, uh, who's also going to be on my show. I'm probably going to release it today or tomorrow, his episode. I'm not sure which day, but... I'd had, I had a long talk with Peter Broderick. He wrote this amazing article in regards to the whole distributor thing and really went at it from a more legal and practical standpoint. And he explained what an ABC is, um, which if people don't know what an ABC is, it is an assignment uh, for the benefit of creditors, which is basically a bankruptcy light. <clears throat> it is a faster process than a bankruptcy. It is also a cheaper process than a bankruptcy for Go Digital. And uh, after speaking to a few attorneys in regards to this, especially bankruptcy attorneys, they said, yes, this is a much faster, more effective way of getting things done. If they do a public one, it will drag on for years and takes forever for even anything to any movement to happen whatsoever. So, uh, when Glass Ratner took on this, uh, there's a very specific group of laws that are around this, and, and we're based here in California, so California does not play when it comes to these kind of regulations in regards to this stuff. So they do not play at all. And uh, Seth and uh, Glass Ratner, who put the GD ABC LLC together to handle all of this, um, they are fiduciaries. Now, I don't know if you guys know what a fiduciary is, <clears throat> but a fiduciary, to my understanding of the definition, is a legal responsibility for the benefit of the client. So, uh, and that, that world comes from the world of finance, where is, if I'm a sales guy selling you something, uh, I could be selling you a, a car, but unbeknownst to you, I also own a piece of the company who's selling the car and I can be making a side hustle. I could be making other money. So there's a cro you know, conflict of interest and things like that. Fiduciaries can't do that. By law, they're bound to um, be in the best interest of the client. The client in this scenario is us. We are the creditors. So they, Glass Ratner and Seth, uh, Friedman, who runs it, he's running this scenario, is legally responsible to us as the creditors to make sure everything gets done to the letter of the law. So I, I don't know if that makes you feel any better, but it it it's at least there's less likelihood of any shady shit going on in the background because they can't do it legally. So I wanted to put that out there so people understand who we're dealing with. Now, uh, Glass Ratner and, and Seth have been uh, basically been in a bunker somewhere and the communications have been very, very nil, uh, not much at all, actually. And, um, and because, because of that, uh, there's been a lot of, you know, talking back and forth, a lot of people angry and pissed off and I get it. And you know what? They could have done a, an effing better job, to be honest with you. They should have been talking to us. They should have been uh, communicating with us. This is not a normal liquidation. This is not a normal, you know, we're dealing with people's livelihoods. We're dealing with people's emotions, um, their art. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, emotion involved with this, not only the financial side, but the artistic side. And uh, they should have treated this a little bit better. But, you know, it is what it is. The past is the past. This is where we are right now. They have made a very big effort to 
be as transparent as possible and help the filmmakers as much as possible uh, now ever since they opened up the ABC. Because again, legally they are, are, are responsible to do so. That's why the website was built up. That's why those resources have been put out where they put out all the phone numbers and contact information for all the platforms so we can contact them directly. Um, and I'll talk to you a little about, about the, the behind the scenes dealings with the platforms and Glass Ratner. Because at the end of the day, this is how this whole process worked, guys. The board of directors of Go Digital hired Glass Ratner. Glass Ratner was paid a, a upfront fee, period. That is the budget that they have to do everything. And uh, they do get a percentage of any money that they're able to get back for, for everybody, for us at this point in the game. So if they get 100 bucks for somebody from somewhere, they get 15 bucks. And the rest of the money goes into a pool to pay the rest of the creditors, which are us. That is by law. There is no funky, there's no funky, uh, you know, uh, wish-washy kind of stuff that going on. There's no hanky-panky. That is just the way the law works, and especially here in California, it is no joke. They are on it, and they can be liable if they do anything other than that. So I hope that gives everybody a little bit more, uh, a little bit safer feeling about this. This is the information that I've been been able to get from my due diligence and doing the research in regards to what an ABC is, speaking to different professionals in the matter, and then also reaffirming all of this with Seth. So that is, so that's how Glass Ratner got involved. They're basically here to clean up the pieces. As Seth made a really horrible analogy, but they're, you know, they didn't kill the body. They didn't kill the person. They're just here to clean up the body and bury it and do the best job they can. They're here to clean up the mess. They're not the virus. They're not the murderer. They're just here to clean up the mess and hopefully pay back some people that are owed money and make this as seamless of a process as possible. If you're angry at anybody, it's at Go Digital, at, 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 you know, at the board of directors possibly, at the, uh, the CEO, the former CEO, and people at, at Go Digital and Distributor who actually created this problem. These guys are here just to help pick up the mess, essentially. Um, and again, their communications have been a little lackluster. Uh, but now, uh, from, at this, from this point on, that will have changed. Uh, for them to call me out, and by the way, I spoke to them for two hours on the phone yesterday, two hours, and I have a multiple other conversations coming, and there's other things that we're working on in the background as well that I'm trying to do to help the community out in this this process. But we'll get to that later. Okay, uh, let's let's just start going off. Let's go down the list of things I got to talk to you guys about. The all of our assets, all of our movies are up on AWS uh, storage unit storage systems, which are basically Amazon's um, cloud service. There's two different kinds of cloud services. One is uh, AWS Live, which is used by Netflix and Hulu and all of these big platforms for streaming. That's where the bandwidth comes in. Where all of our movies live is in AWS storage, which is the Glacier. It's called Glacier, which is just a storage facility. It's just a place where you put things that aren't going to be accessed very often. They are in the process of transferring over. Amazon is actually transferring everything over from Glacier to Amazon Live. So at that point, these assets will be available for use to be put on platforms for the platforms to use, switch things over. It becomes a little easier. Unfortunately, this is a very long process. There's a lot of just physical time that it takes that we're, we're dealing with just literally pipes, but bandwidth of transferring all the files, getting everything organized, including our, all, all our deliverable files, including the closed caption files, including any, anything we did um, that we was paid for to get these things, all our films up on the platforms. It's being transferred over to the live, um, to the live version of it, but it will take time. So unfortunately, that is just uh, the reality of the situation. The hard drives with all of our stuff on it and the servers are all sitting at this moment at the offices of Glass Ratner behind, closed, behind uh, lock and key. So it's not no longer in a mysterious bunker somewhere. It is with them. Do not, I repeat, do not call them. Do not reach out to them about these hard drives. 
if you imagine how much of a cluster bomb this whole situation with distributor is and how horribly that company was run, do you think that all these hard drives are properly labeled or have phone numbers or information or even titles on them? They do not. So they are going to go through each hard drive step by step and try to organize them and then contact all of the proper license, license owners or you know the owners of the content to make arrangements to get the hard drives back to you. But all of the QC elements, all of the closed captioning that you paid for, all of the QC that you paid for, everything that's already been done, that lives on AWS. They are going to attempt to, once this is all up on AWS, that you're going to be able to go to your dashboard, click a button, and download your assets. Uh, Glass Ratner is working on that. It is not live yet. But once everything is there, it will be an option so you can easily download all of your assets. And that is a huge deal because at least we have our assets back. And they are the QC assets. So we don't have to go through that whole process again and have to pay for things again. Um, on a side note, Linda from um, Indie Rights has been pounding Rev.com pretty heavily, as, as has Glass Ratner to give us and get us access back to all of our closed captioning files that were done by Go Digital. And if you weren't aware of what Glass, uh, what um, Go Digital Distributor was doing, is they were, um, to my understanding, charging us uh, for closed captioning, right? So they would charge us, ah, I don't know, a thousand bucks. And then they would say, they would say, no, nah, no, nah, don't use Rev.com. Rev.com doesn't, doesn't really... They're not doing good right now. So then they would charge us a thousand bucks and then uh, then go to then, then go to rev.com and do the, and just go through them and pay a dollar a minute while they were charging us five dollars a minute. Allegedly. This is all allegedly, but this is uh, all I know is that all of our a lot of our closed captioning files, if not all of them, live on rev.com. So unless you paid for a rev.com thing separately, sounds like what happened. Um, a lot of shady stuff. Alleged shady stuff has gone on at, uh, at Distributor. So we'll find out more when um, uh, this new story comes out. Oh, and let, me, let me bring that up real quick because a lot of people have been asking about it. Um, everyone knows that, we are, that there is an LA Times article being done about this entire event. Uh, I've spoken to the... the um, the writer of it, Ryan, multiple times. It's supposedly going to come out this week, if not next, and it's a very big deep dive, uh, probably deeper than anything we've has been released before. It's probably going farther than uh, I was able to go originally, because they've been able to interview ex employees, and um, it. I can't promise you, but it looks like it's going to be a pretty, pretty damning and pretty uh, deep article. So I'm hoping. That's the case. Anyway, so I want to thank Linda uh, from Indie Rights really a lot for pounding on Rev. And Rev is trying to uh, figure out a system where we can get access back to our closed captioning files so we don't have to spend the money again to get those files. If we're able to get this whole AWS live thing situated where you can just download your assets, it won't be a problem. But until then, we're trying to, they're trying to figure things out. Okay, so according to Seth at Glass Ratner, there's over 2,000 films affected by this scenario. So it's 2,000 films affected, and um, God knows how many actual filmmakers, anywhere from 800 to 1,500 filmmakers affected by this scenario, and millions of dollars. I want to say that again with a capital M, millions and millions of dollars is this the situation is 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 run through like affecting million dollars millions of dollars lost millions of dollars lost and uh where it went we don't know yet but uh we're digging and we're gonna find out and if it's not the la times and it's not joe and me we're gonna figure out what the hell happened because we'll figure it out we'll figure it out and we'll let you know about that okay 
Next, um, let me see. Two, two, two. Okay, everybody knows at this point that Amazon has now terminated their relationship with Distributor Go Digital. And Amazon, lovely Amazon, did not want to discuss any other options in regards to switching things over, so on and so forth, nothing. They just said, screw you, screw everybody involved, and uh, we don't want to have anything to do with it. And they just knocked everybody's stuff off. So that's why all your movies were pulled off of Amazon because Amazon discontinued any communication with Go Digital Distributor and with Glass Ratner because Glass Ratner was trying to figure something out. Um, so that's why that's what's happening. As of right now, uh, Glass Ratner is still in contact with other platforms and we're trying to, and I've been brought in on this and I'm trying to work some, something out to see what we can do to get access to our films again uh, easily on these platforms or at least less, less of a pain in the butt that we are going currently going through. So that is where we're at with that. Um, one thing I, I thought was really interesting and, and I wanted to bring this up to you, uh, the concept of the greasy wheel gets, uh, gets, you know, gets attention. A lot of filmmakers in this distributor scenario had did not really stay on top of distributor. And I'm not saying you had to, but this goes with any distribution company. You've got to stay on top of them to get your pay, your money. You've got to make sure that they're paying. If they, if they haven't paid you and the time they're supposed to be paying you, you've got to be on top of them like white on rice. I'm telling you, you just got to keep pounding them. Uh, you really, really got to keep doing it. And I think a lot of filmmakers, um, and, and I've, you know, Seth said this to me, because there's a lot of filmmakers who, who just didn't even contact them for, for years. Like, in like for like a year. Like we're talking about 12 months back, people are owed money. So distributor paid some people, didn't pay other people. You know, basically whoever made the most noise got paid. You know, and uh, that is the reality of uh, the world that we live in. So moving forward, Whoever you deal with in distribution, whether it be your distribution companies, whether it be another film aggregator, anybody, you just got to stay on top of them and make as much noise as humanly possible. So that's just a, something I want to kind of toss out there. Um, let me see. I did ask a, a specific question of Seth. <clears throat> and I said, Seth, you guys have not performed a, a forensic accounting yet of uh, go digital yet have you he's like no we haven't i go well, you will he goes yeah we're doing that in the weeks to come i'm like great if you find any fraud if you find any embezzlement will you report it he goes by law we have to by law we have to report anything we find so if there was any hanky panky and if there was any embezzlement alleged embezzlement or any fraud of any sort Whatever they find, legally, they are on the hook for, so they have to report it to the proper authorities and to the board. If they don't, they will, they will be in very, very deep trouble. And this company, Glass Ratner, has been around for a long time, and they work with a lot of you know, big billion-dollar uh, deals and things like that. So... You know, they, they know what they're doing in regards to this. They're not going to risk everything for protecting somebody at distributor. So I just want you to be, uh, again, I want you to feel a little bit of comfort in that, that whatever is found will come out. As far as the money that is owed to everybody, and I want everyone sitting down on this one because it's, uh, it's not great news. Right now, there are two forms of creditors. There are secured creditors and unsecured creditors. Secured creditors generally get paid first. I was informed by Seth that there are no secured creditors. There just aren't because that's not this kind of business. In other words, there's not like a, a, you know, the guy who that, that perform like a, a supplier of some sort that perform. You know, that I, I I'm owed a hundred thousand dollars for bottles that I sent and they never got paid. There are, there is nothing like that because this was a digital company. So there are no secured uh, creditors that they're going to be dealing with, but there are the non-secured, which are all of us. That includes any money that is owed to us for uh, services unrendered and also for uh, residuals. According to Seth, 
after, after September 19th, any money coming in after September 19th goes into a separate account. That money will be refunded to everybody, or not refunded, but to uh, that money will go be distributed to all of the licensees in full. But there's a catch. If you made money in May and you got paid for that money September 20th, doesn't count. It goes into the other pool. If you have your movie rented on iTunes on September 20th, you will get your percentage, your full residuals paid. So that is something. Also, another thing that there has been talks about, um, we're paying Glass Ratner and all this kind of stuff. We are not. The money that is coming in is not paying them. They were paid a one upfront fee by the board of the directors to handle this. So any monies that have come in are in uh, segregated accounts that they've, the second they took a control over this whole process over a month ago, uh, those accounts have been set up. After September 19th, that separate account will be money that will go back completely to us as filmmakers. All the other money will go into a pool. Now, this is how the pool is going to work, guys. <sighs> if everybody had the exact same amount of money owed to them, then everybody would get an equal share of this money. It's not going to work that way. If I'm owed $100 and my buddy's owed $100,000, they're going to get a bigger percentage of whatever money gets put out. The bad news is, guys, and I know a lot of you are holding on to hope, and I know a lot of you are holding on um, to, well, hope is the best word to use, I guess, that you're going to get your money. Unfortunately, the money is not there. The money is not going to be there. Um, whatever money is there, it's there. And any new monies that they're able to get from other deals will go into this pot to help, you know, in the liquidation process. They don't have a lot in assets, but whatever they can get will go into the pot. And 85% of that pot will go to us. 15% will go to Glass Ratner, period. If you are owed a lot of money and you're in hopes of getting that money, um, your chances are extremely, extremely not good. We, would pr we will probably get pennies on the dollar, if that. I'm sorry for the bluntness of it, but that's, that's unfortunate. And we can talk about it in the comments. I'm not even looking at the comments. I see a bunch of them coming in. I'm not even looking there. We're going to get to those in a minute after I'm done with the, um, the initial. So I knew this at the beginning. I've kind of have been priming you guys about this, but this is the reality of the situation. This company uh, basically mismanaged millions of dollars millions of dollars, uh, mismanage, alleged embezzlement, fraud. We don't know, but it was mismanaged for sure. And, uh, there just wasn't a lot of money. And I knew that from there from the beginning, from the first time I, I spoke to Seth, there just wasn't a lot of, there's not just, just not a lot of money to go around. So this is unfortunately the situation we're in. Um, okay. After 19th, uh, okay. Money made, blah, blah, blah. Hard drives, total owed. Um, oh, right now, if you guys go to your dashboards, if you want to set up a, if you want to set up, or you want to remove your, your movies from the platform, there actually is a button that is in the dashboard next to your movie that says a request. So you could just hit that button and it'll be an automatic 30 days later, your movies will come down from all the platforms that your movie is up on. So if you want to do that, um, you can do that. Uh, I am working on something in the background right now to see if we can, I'm working with, with Seth and Glass Ratner and some other parties to see if we can create a little bit less harmful way of getting our movies on the platforms, back on the platforms, and associated with proper accounting so we can get our money directly and away from Go Digital. So if you want to pull your movie off, I've been saying pull your movie off, pull your movie, pull, pull it off. 
Pull it off if you want to. Um, we're going to know within a week or so if we're able to do something. By November 10th, if nothing happens, everything gets pulled off. So I'm working, I'm working feverishly on the, end, on the back end here trying to help you guys and trying to help something out. I've been brought into this scenario, um, and I am trying to uh, do the best I can for, for you guys and, and just to try to lessen the blow here as best I can. So um, just be aware that that's going on. Uh, percentage of money. Oh, fee up front of my, okay. Let me see. I'm just going through my notes here, guys. Um, film backs are money, fraud, um, forensic accounting, live dashboard, 2000 movie platform numbers. Um, trouble signs in my house. Oh, and uh, one last thing I will, I will put on here is that Seth from Glass Ratner has agreed to come on the Indie Film Hustle podcast. And I am going to put out a request in the group and I will, I will put up a special um, post. Any questions you want answered, answer, put them in there and I will try to put it into the show uh, and, and get those questions answered. And uh, he's going to be, he's willing to answer whatever questions we have to the best of his knowledge. You know, he can't talk about the board he doesn't know what the board is thinking or what anything. The one thing that is true, though, is Glass Ratner is a serious firm, and does a, this is a big this is a big firm. Uh, the board of directors of Go Digital could have easily just uh, hired a, 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 a Mickey Mouse operation. They could have just filed for bankruptcy and said screw it to everybody. But that doesn't have really great optics for the board of directors of Go Digital since they're all very high profile people. So. By hiring Glass Ratner, at least it shows, for even for their own best interest, that they are serious about trying to better this situation. Even if it's only a cosmetic view from the outside, we're benefiting from it. Because this could have gone much worse, guys. Could have gone much worse. They could have just filed for Chapter 11 or Chapter 7, and that's the end of it. And we would have no information. We would have no anything. We would have nothing. So there would be no information that we've had. It would have just all been locked up. So we didn't know what was going on. So originally when this story broke, when I broke it, you know, if this did go to a bankruptcy, it could have locked up our films for a long time. But because they went through this ABC, which no one saw coming, then the, the scenario is a little bit different. And we will still have, because they went through the, the ABC, uh, we still have access to our films. We still, it's not going to get locked up for years, things like that. But if they went bankrupt, it would be a whole other conversation. So now we have more information. So, you know, this is an ever evolving story, you know? So, uh, so if you, so I will put in, in the protect yourself from distributor Facebook group, I'm going to just put up, all right, guys, ask any questions here. If Seth, you want, I will have him on the show next week and probably release that as well. And he's agreed to come on video as well. So we'll have a video version of it as well. So it should be an interesting conversation. Uh, again, I'm doing this as a service to, to you guys. And I want you to have the ability to, to ask uh, to Seth and Glass Ratner anything you might have questions about and um, things that we I haven't covered here. But as you can tell, there was, as you can tell, there's been a lot of developments in the last 24 hours. And I promise you, once this LA Times article goes on, there's going to probably be more developments. So, um, all right. So now I'm going to uh, ask any questions. So I'm going to just read things as I read them. Uh, yes, uh, Linda brings up a good point. There should be an option to destroy the hard disks to save on postage and shipping. Um, filmmakers should have a copy of what they did. They had to with distributor. So I've already discussed that. We are trying to get that uh, digitally done. So the hard drives would just be destroyed by Gl Glass Ratner. Uh, again, again, because they are involved in this situation, and now because the hard drives are in their possession, they're on the hook for anything, guys. So trust me, they're not going to upload these things. They don't want to get sued. They don't want any of this stuff. They want to get in, do their job, and get out and try to help as much as they can um, as they possibly can during this whole process. Um, uh, of course, Adam, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm helping as much as I can. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. The Chapter Eleven road is not a fun road to be. Anyways, has anyone on iTunes and Amazon, Google going forward uh, to offer quick, cheap options to get your content back up as we started monetizing our work again? So John is asking, is there a quick option uh, to go to iTunes, Amazon, or Google right now? Amazon is off the t off the table. So if you want to go through Amazon, you can upload your own movie again through Amazon Video Direct, and you should have no problem. If you have any copyright it if you have any issues with them saying oh the it's still up there just submit a copyright inf a copyright um, infringement uh, request or a uh, dispute it's the only time they really take a, the only time they really uh, take notice and they will uh, they will deal with it at that point and you'll get your movie back down and then back up so on Amazon you can directly just upload it it's the only platform you can do that with um, but uh, but that's the only thing right now. We are, again, working on some stuff in the background to see if we can make this an easy, quick, and affordable option to at least get your movies to stay on these platforms and, um, and then just switch over the accounting. But we're figuring some stuff out. This is, this is not an easy scenario, guys. Uh, you're dealing with multi-billion dollar corporations with a lot of bureaucracy and things like that. And we're also dealing with thousands of films nobody wants to deal with this by the way nobody nobody involved here wants to deal with this amazon doesn't want to deal with uh, apple doesn't want to do google uh you know we, you know glass ratner would have just rather it be a whole bunch of video cassettes that they could just sell off and that's the end of it this is a very sticky bad situation for everybody involved including us obviously so it, it is what it is and uh we're we're, we're i'm doing the best i can on the behind the scenes to try to help the situation. I'll let you guys know what comes up in the coming, in the coming days and weeks. Uh, if the money is not there, how can it be not fraud? The money came from the customer's rentals and purchases. I agree with you 110%, Richard. If the money, and then this is a weird, this is a weird part of this conversation. Uh, there is conversations being had in regards to what the legality of the contract is. I know it was sold, the distributor sold us the idea that we kept the rights to our movies and we would get money coming in from any rentals and, and, and any revenue coming in. Well, there's one that's a business, um, there's like a, was it a, I forgot the term that they used. It's either a company um, responsibility and a business responsibility, something along those lines, where it's, it's complicated and I don't want to muddy the waters with this, but bottom line is that right now, the lawyers are going over the details of all the agreements that we, we signed with distributor and find out exactly what their responsibility was. Now, there's arguments to be made that, period, they owe us the money that was coming in. There's just no conversation about it, but there might be some things that are com they're doing some conversations to see what the actual responsibility was, as horrible as that might sound. Um, but uh, yeah, and as far as getting your money back from for services unrendered, like I'm still I'm still dealing with it. I did get money back, but my I just talked to my credit card company, and it's still like we're waiting. So I have the money, but the credit card company can take it back at any moment. So I, I have a horrible company, Chase. It's horrible. Um, but that's where we're at at this point in the game with that. So if you paid money and you didn't get your services done, that is fraud. That is, uh, that is, that is fraudulent in the definition of it. So it's up to you if you, you know, you could try to sue. And also, I wanted to bring that up to you guys. As far as suing as a class action, civil, uh, a civil lawsuit against Distributor Go Digital, um, it's useless. It's useless. There's nobody, the company doesn't have any funds. So it's like taking, there's no blood in that rock. Only thing that you can do is file criminal charges. And uh, I'm sure that there are, I've talked to people who have, are having conversation and are filing, you know, criminal charges. The FBI has been contacted. A file has been opened on this. Uh, the LA District Attorney is aware of this uh, as well. So, you know, justice we might get, money, maybe, 
And that's a big maybe if there was real wrongdoing at the highest levels of this company. But we'll, we'll see. Um, okay, so... Yeah, there, so as far as uh, if you're go, if you guys want to go with Indie Rights and Linda, she is able to work with the platforms to get to transfer the information over um, to her. Uh, with with I think all the platforms or some of them, I'm not sure, Linda, but you can tell me because um, that's what I did with this is Meg when I put it back up. Linda was able to. Uh, no, I think you re-uploaded it for me at that time. We, we were we didn't have that conversation going on yet, so. Uh, I think Linda and, and you guys, if you have questions for Linda and Indy Wright in regards to that, I think they uh, they can do that. But uh, I'll keep going down. Uh, how do we know they didn't fudge any numbers uh, and viewed it? Uh, oh, oh, absolutely. Richard, uh, we don't know. Until there's a forensics accounting of it, we just don't know. So, and to be honest with you, Richard, you know, we don't really know what what these platforms are sending. Like even the reports that are being sent by the big platforms, we're trusting that they're real. There's no way to check. There's no way to find out that if a thousand people rented, that we're getting a thousand, uh, you know, uh, percent, you know, percentage of a thousand sales. Well, there's just really no way to check. We are. It's all on the honor system at this point in the game with these big platforms, unless they paid you an upfront fee or something like that. There's no real way of doing it. That's just the way the business is run right now. I don't think it's really right. Hopefully, there's some technology that um, will help that in the future. So it's really accurate. Uh, blockchain is a really great option. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about that later if you want. Um, but by the way, also Netflix is the only platform that I know of that is working with filmmakers that are owed money because they have a different deal. It wasn't a revenue share deal or anything like that. So if, uh, if you have a Netflix deal and you're owed money from that Netflix deal, Try to contact Netflix. If not, Netflix is already contacting you because they're trying to help filmmakers and also clean up the mess uh, because they were a preferred vendor of Netflix. Distributor was a preferred um, partner of Netflix. So they really uh, screwed the pooch in regards to that. So I think they're trying to clean up the mess uh, and help filmmakers as much as possible. So if you have a Netflix deal, try to contact Netflix directly if they haven't contacted you first. Um... Who can we trust when it, when it comes to distribution? My friend, uh, this is a question by Richard. Honestly, you got to do your due diligence on all of these companies. Any, any distribution company, any film aggregator, you've got to do due diligence. It's like any business deal with any company in the world. If you're in the cookie business and you make a deal to get your flour from a company, you're hoping that when you send a check for a product that you're going to get it or that the product that you're buying is what they're saying they're going to do. This is business. This is straight up business in any business whatsoever. Uh, distribution is no different, no different whatsoever. You're going to have to do your, your due diligence, call five, 10 filmmakers who have dealt with them recently, find out questions like, did they pay you on time? How are their, how is their reporting? Are they, is it hard to get people on the phone? What are they doing for you? All these kind of questions, you know, um, that's how you find out. That's the only way really, man. You know, uh, you know, I'm with Indie Rights right now with my films with in, this is Meg and with Ego and Desire. And, uh, Linda has Linda and Indie Rights have a really great reputation over the last 10, 12 years. You can contact any of their filmmakers. Uh, actually Linda challenges you to find a filmmaker that has a bad thing to say about them, you know? So, um, again, I'm not promoting them. Uh, you know, I'm saying this is a scenario. Look into indie rights if that's something you want to look into. Um, look at the Film Hub if that's another uh, option. Look into any other distribution company. Look into, you know, Quiver or Bitmax if that makes sense to you. Um, you just have to, you know, you have to work it. Look, bottom line is this whole system is broken. It's specifically the film aggregation system. It's broken. We're on an, a huge honor system with these film aggregators. Huge. There is no fiduciary responsibility. There's no escrow accounts. There is no um, oversight on how money comes in and how money gets distributed to us, period. And Go Digital Distributor is a perfect example of what happens when there is no, um, nobody watching millions of dollars funneling through a company. There's just two 
many opportunities for leakage, for things to go wrong. Human beings are human beings. So, you can, and that goes along with distributors to a different extent with distributors. But with film aggregators specifically, it's, it's a little bit, it's, it's, it's broken. It's a broken system. And I don't know how we fix it, but it needs to be fixed because if you don't think this is going to happen again, it could very easily happen again. Um, okay, John. Uh, so you're recommending people leave their films up at this point because Rat and Ratner is getting money after September 19th, or do you still take advice? My advice, Jason, and there's a question from Jason. My advice is to get your movie switched over to another option or pull it down and get it back up to another option. Right now, money is going into Glass Ratner and is going in, and it's going into a separate account. That's all great and dandy. And I love it. And I think it's fantastic that they're doing that. But I don't know when that money is going to get to me, man. You know, they're talking about nine to 12 months from now. So I would want to get access to my money and know at least a might have a better grip on that I'm going to get my money. Um, than waiting nine to 12 months that I'm going to get my money. So I would, I, if you can wait a week to two weeks, I will have an answer on what we're doing behind the scenes to try to make this situation better. I'm not promising that we can make it better as far as switching information over, not having to spend a lot of money, if any at all, to get your movie switched, all this kind of stuff. We're talking about a bunch of this stuff. So if you want to wait a week or two, be my guest. Uh, if you can't wait, then pull it down. But there's going to be a cost going up. If you're going with a distributor, it doesn't matter. If you're going with a distributor, then you pull it down. Pull it down. Pull it down and let the distributor deal with it. Um, like if you're going with Linda, pull it down. Or, excuse me, don't pull it down. If you're going with Linda and you contact Linda, talk to them first. And if you're dealing with a distributor, in period, talk to them first and find out if they have a relationship to switch this stuff over on the back end uh, with the platforms, like Linda does at this point, and Indie Rights does. So um, talk to them first before you pull it down. And then based on what they say, it could be more affordable and quicker for you to have them deal with it wholly, as opposed to you having to try to deal with it. That's why you hire a partner. That's why you partner with a distribution company for them to handle this kind of stuff. You know, Linda handled it for me with This Is Meg. You know, I didn't have to upload things. That's what they do. That's what they're doing. That's their job. So that's what I would recommend. But if you can wait, and if you don't, let's say you want to go up with another film aggregator, if you can wait for a couple weeks, there might be a, a better option coming. That's all I can say because I, I don't want to give anybody hope yet because I got to figure it out. We're still way early in the process. All right. Um, let me see. Remember, uh, yes, of course. Of course. Yeah. Linda says that very clearly. And, and I want you guys to be understanding with Amazon. If you go up on Amazon video direct, you get two territories, period. That's it. You get us and you get the UK. That's all you do. If you go with someone like Linda or, um, with film hub or someone like that, you'll get into many more territories. Specifically with Linda, you get into 68, 69 English speaking territories and have access to 140 or 150 territories, depending on the language. Um, you can't do that by yourself. You need to have a partner, whether that be a distribution partner, um, even film aggregators will not be able to get your films up on all those platforms. If, you know, distributor got, got me up on, you know, the U S and the UK, that was it. That's it. They don't have the reach that a distributor with different kind of deals has. So keep that in mind. Um, while you're doing that. If you want to do it really quickly to get it up there in those two territories to still make some money while you're looking for a distributor, that's fine. Up to you. Um, you may have said this, but in the timeline of downloading all the assets, um, the, the, time, the timeline to download your assets is how long it's going to take from the transfer from the Glacier Amazon servers, which is storage, to the Amazon Live, where it can handle bandwidth. Because right now the storage is just basically what it is. It's just a locker somewhere you put, you know, a digital locker. You put your files in and that's the end of it. Um, but if you want to get continuous access to all these files, it has to go into the live section of it. And that's going to take some time to, uh, to, to port over. So the timeline, we don't know. Could be a month, could be five months. I, I really don't know. I really don't know. Um, uh, let's see.
Yeah, if um if you really can't uh, yeah, Richard, if you can't um monitor a dashboard uh, at the end of the day, like a dashboard to get, you know, to check your re your revenues and stuff like that. All of this, guys, is on the honor system. I hate to tell you, all of it's on the honor system. When you sold DVDs, there were DVDs. You sold DVDs. You 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 bought 100 did 100 sell? No, 60 sold. Great. Where are the other 40? Oh, here they are. With digital files in digital SVOD, TVOD, AVOD, it's not the way it works. We're all trusting that all the platforms are honest with all of us. We don't know. There's just no way of checking, you know? So I doubt that these companies are stealing from us. I don't think that's the case. That would be a very bad business model because if that information got out, it pretty much would destroy them. So I don't think it makes sense for them to funnel off money. But at the end of the day, man, I don't, I, I just, there's no way of checking. So unfortunately, Richard, in the world that we live in today with the technology that is available today, we are on the honor system when it comes to money made via any platform online. Because we are only, even if you know, even someone like uh, Indie Rights, who's extremely transparent with all of their revenue, they're trusting that the revenue reports coming in from all these platforms is correct. You know, there's no way to go in and do an audit on how much actual, how many actual minutes were watched, how many hours were actually watched. You're hoping that the algorithm and everything is working properly. So that is the world we live in, my friend. I hate to tell you. It's... Uh, if not, you don't like that, we can go back to selling VHSs out of the back trunks of our cars because that way we can actually know. You won't have many sales, though, but that's the only way we can actually know what's going on. Um, let me see. I'd pull your film down. We don't know for sure uh, who will participate in the transfer process. The, uh, Linda says it's the surest way is to pull your movie down. Um, at this point, like I said, if you can wait a week or two, Wait a week or two. See what happens. After that, pull your movie down. I don't think we're in a, we're not in a, again, according to Seth and Glass Ratner, we're not in a place where we are going to have a loss of our movies. In other words, this company is not just going to disappear tomorrow and we're never going to be able to get this dealt with and we're going to go through a nightmare of trying to get our movies down and off and down and up and all that kind of stuff. That's not happening because of the ABC. What will happen, though, after a certain date, and Seth put that date out already. It's November 10th. It was the 31st, but he pushed it to November 10th because we're trying to work something out. That means basically they will just sever all ties and pull everything down, period. No requests, no nothing. All movies go down after November 10th. So we won't have to worry about it. And at that point, all those, pro all those films will be pulled down, and then... Uh, then we go through the process of going through, going, putting them all back up through whatever means, whether that be a distributor or a film aggregator. Um, let me see. Has anyone else been lucky refunding their PayPal's over six months? I don't know. Um, all I can say is that if you can prove fraud and really pound them on the fraud, uh, Richard, maybe that'll help. I don't know. If, uh, if anybody else has in the, um, uh, if if anybody has in the um, in the group, please let us know if you've been able to get your money back from PayPal past six months. And yes, Richard, we are going to bring back VHS as I think there's a surge. I mean, look, vinyl is going to overtake CD sales for the first time since 1980. So, hey, there's hope, I guess, right? <laughs> All right, guys, is there any other questions? Um, I've been on for almost an hour. So is there any other questions that I can answer for anybody? I hope this has been of value to you guys. Um, I'm doing everything I can behind the scenes to, to try to make this, uh, try to help as much as humanly possible and bring as much information as I can to you guys. So uh, any other questions? Any other questions at all? I'll give it a, a, a good 20 seconds for anyone to ask me any other questions and then we will call it a day. I've got podcasts to put out. I got, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> and let me see. When is my audiobook coming out? Yes. Um, Rise of the Film Entrepreneur. 
is the audiobook is done um, to a certain extent. I have to go back and just fix a couple of mistakes I did, but I've recorded it. Um, I don't know if we're going to hit the November 7th release date because we're having some technical issues on the book, physical book side. Uh, but the book is written. It's done. We've, we're, we're pretty much 99% done with the editorial process. Now we're just laying everything out and getting everything in the, in the pipeline for the, the paperback uh, and the Kindle version. Um, but the audiobook will be done. So if I feel that this is not going to, it's going to take a little longer than mid November to get the physical book out, I might release the audiobook early because that's something within my power to do really quickly. But that book is going to be a, um, a nuclear bomb going off in our business, I promise you. There's a lot of great stuff in that book, and I really hope it helps a lot of filmmakers think differently about how they can make money with their movies. Uh, and yes, VHS isn't part of that. It's part of that model, uh, Richard. So um, prepare yourself because uh, VHS is making a comeback. <laughs> You're welcome, Jason. You're welcome, Dan. Uh, again, I do this for you guys. Uh, it's my job. It's what I do. I'm here to help the community as much as I possibly can. And, and, and there aren't a lot of voices as boisterous as me in our space. And uh, it's, my, it's my responsibility to do good as much as I can with, with everybody and help as many people as I possibly can. Uh, you're welcome, Richard. Thank you guys all again. Uh, this will go live on uh, YouTube, I think probably sometime today. Uh, and then I will release this today, if I'm not mistaken, on the podcast as well, maybe later this afternoon, if not tomorrow. But there will also be a new podcast with Peter Broderick's interview this week as well. And then next week I've got um, hopefully Seth, and some Halloween surprises on the on the podcast uh, as well. So thank you guys all. Uh, thank you, Crystal. I appreciate it. And uh, please spread the word as much as you can. All this information, just get it out to as many people as humanly possible. I don't want this to happen again to filmmakers. Um, and I want I want us to protect ourselves as much as possible because this is a this is a battleground. This is a battle. This is a war. And um, this, uh, we, there, what we have is numbers. There are many more of us trying to get into the party than the people who are in the party. And that is where the power lies. And I'm going to do the best I can to galvanize all of us to be able to make a living in this business. And that is my mission in life to help artists and to help filmmakers do that. So uh, this is just part of this is just part of my journey to help you guys do what I, what what you what you need to be doing. So thank you guys again. I appreciate it. I will uh, I will see you guys uh, on the flip side and uh, stay on the the uh, the Facebook group for the latest updates. And again, also I want to say really quickly thank you to Joe Dane for all the, the tireless work that he's doing on this man. Uh, he's really working heavily behind the scenes um, to really get a lot of information out to everybody. So Joe, thank you again so much, as well as Linda um, from Indie Rights. Uh, they're two champions here who are really helping us out a lot. So I appreciate it. And again, thanks to Seth for reaching out and opening up dialogue with us, which uh, is long overdue, Seth, but we'll talk about that on the show. Thanks again, guys.